So some Gen X extras. These are kind of fun, actually. So Calico Cats. I don't know if you know this, but the gene for fur color is actually found on the X chromosome. So it's X linked. It's inherited on the X chromosome. So just so we know, <clears throat> female cats are XX and male cats are XY, like humans. Therefore, then we know that male cats would have to receive their fur color from their mothers. This X chromosome always comes from the mom in a male. Or, quote unquote, normally it comes from the mother. So remember that the Y chromosome, just so you know, it doesn't really do much. It it helps, obviously, it helps with testosterone, but other than that, most of most of the genetic stuff coming from your parents is on the X chromosome coming from your mom, if you will. So a female cat can receive different color genes and be a quote unquote calico cat. Okay, so if you notice, say you have a calico female and a non-orange male. So that means that he would, so if he's not orange, let's say he's, his um, X chromosome from his, his mother gave him the non-orange color, if you will. So if you notice, <clears throat> kind of like our planet squares, um, from the dad and the mom, you know, you can see that, oh, when you cross these here to here, you end up with a calico female because you can get different X chromosomes. Y, the, 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 the Y from the dad and the orange from the mom would give you an orange male because the Y chromosomes do not contain any color genes at all. So you can get a black female if you have if that cat inherits the black, the chromosome with the non-orange gene and the X chromosome from the dad, the non-orange male. For the for a black male, you end up getting the X chromosome from the mom and the Y chromosome carries nothing for color. However, there can be male calico cats. So based on what you know, what you remember from the last quarter, how can this be possible? Why would, how can it be, how can they be male calico cats? If you remember, there was a certain condition with the karyotype or with the chromosomes 47XXY, and this is Klinefelter's. So if you have a male calico cat, most likely, well, they would have to have Klinefelter syndrome because you can't have a male calico cat because the X chromosome that they would get would be just from the mom normally. However, in a male calico cat, it's possible that they they inherit the X's from the mom and they're both they're black or they're non orange and orange, or maybe the dad sperm did not separate like it was supposed to, and you end up with um a, you know a non orange X from the mom and then an orange X from the dad, just depending. So we keep doing Punnett squares and pedigrees and all that type of stuff. So why, what's the point of it? We kind of described earlier, but you know, why? So I don't know if you ever noticed before on the side of things like Coke Zero, Diet Cokes, they have something called, they have this thing, right? This kind of disclaimer right here. Phenylketonurics, this contains phenylalanine. Okay, so that's kind of weird. Next time you look at Coke Zero, you might see this. Just check it on the side. Check the, I think it's in Diet Coke as well. So phenylketonuria, or PKU, it's a mutation that causes increased levels of phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is a, or is an amino acid. And unfortunately, if you don't break this down correctly, you end up with a few different symptoms. So you have behavioral problems, mental disorder, a musty smell, and I'm always trying to figure out the best way to describe it, but musty is like, I want to say, I can't, I can never figure out how to describe musty, but it has a certain smell that you can just describe as musty. Uh, maybe y'all can help me in class to figure out the best way to describe it. In babies, they would often have heart problems, a small head, and a low birth weight. So this is autosomal recessive as well. 
And the way to test for it is they actually will test a baby's blood when they're born to see if they have PKU. It is so well known that it is one of the common tests done when a baby is born so they can screen for it. If they catch it when the baby is born, they can do a few things to help decrease the chances of having those symptoms like we talked about. So if you have two carrier parents, meaning they are not affected by the disorder, you will notice that kind of in a Punnett square, you would have one unaffected child, potentially, you would potentially have two carriers or one who is, a, is affected and has PKU. So how do you treat it? Well, maintain a strict diet and get specialized formula for babies and avoid certain drinks and foods that contain um, a lot of phenylalanine. That's the abbreviation for it. So for example, they would have to avoid things like fish, meat, dairy, wheat, eggs, nuts, legumes, beans, diets. So basically high protein foods. They would have to ingest more, more fruit, vegetables. Look at the special breads like that are not wheat cookies crackers low protein stuff and sugars again it's a balance because you know too much sugar is bad but having too much of the other things can be deadly for somebody with pku so that is it for now for chapter eight we will continue moving on with our new material later in class but um that's it so take care be safe and i'll see you in class bye